Ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that. We had a little bit of a technical hiccup there, but nonetheless, my name is Blake Tollerton alongside me, Bennett Lincoln. We're here for Men's Ultimate down at Method Road Field, NC State going up against Duke. Tobacco Road rivalry, we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be a really intense game. Bennett, what are you looking forward to in, in this men's ultimate matchup? Uh, mostly right now what we're seeing is the depth of NC State. They have a large roster compared to Duke's roster. It's about twice the size of Duke's roster, so that could really play into the, into the outcome of tonight's game. Without a doubt, just having those subs just constantly going in, it might wear into later in the second half. Um, so we'll be playing to 13 tonight. That's that's what we're looking at right now. It's going to be a 13, like, first one to score 13 points. There's going to be a soft cap at 75 minutes and then a hard cap at 80, I believe. And uh, from then on out, we'll just have to see how this game plays out. We'll be right back with the kickoff. At Potbelly, Everything you find is a little bit happier, sweeter, fresher, groovier, and yummier. Why? Because at Potbelly, we know it's never enough to just eat lunch. You gotta feed your smile. Swing by for our new turkey club, handcrafted to make you smile. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your one-stop shop for all things Wolfpack. Located in the Ridgewood Shopping Center off of Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop recently expanded from 2,400 to 5,400 square feet. Whether you're in need of tailgating essentials, decals and magnets, home goods, apparel for people of all ages, or sporting goods, the Red and White Shop has it all. Stop by today for your NC State needs. I was diagnosed at 65. 37. Earlier than most. Every nine minutes, someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And every one of them can turn to the American Parkinson Disease Association. Visit APDAParkinson.org to learn more and show your support today. Oh, hey, bud. Where, uh, where are you headed? Uh, I'm just gonna hang out. With Gary and Todd? Yeah. I've been meaning to ask you, is there any drinking going on in this crowd? No. If any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I'd do anything to keep you safe. Okay, I will. I hope this is working. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Welcome back down to Lower Method Field, folks, as we're getting ready for the pool here on the Ultimate Frisbee game versus Duke. And there's the throw. NC State gets possession. Looking, <laughs> looking to move the ball. The ball. Sorry, folks. The Frisbee up the field. Making some good progress. Little pitch and catch here from NC State. Looks like they have the cutter in the end zone. Just trying to punch it home. Little curving throw there. Now joined by by Blake on the other headset. <laughs> I had to get State moved it down the field quick here. Yeah, I had to get some last minute roster <laughs> updates real quick. Very important. <laughs> We're gonna have to see how Duke's defensive team here can start out. So far it's looked a little soft, but they've managed to stuff them at the goal line so far. And we're gonna have to see if NC State can just like keep probing this this Duke defense. And there's a. It looks like looks that's like gonna be it. in. Yep. That's gonna be a score for State. You see the whole team running out there to celebrate. That was a really really quick score there yeah, by. It was a nice NC diving State. catch. Absolutely, that was beautiful. That was one thing that uh, the club president of the women's team was mentioning is that when two high powered offenses, excuse me, are going up against each other, um, it's gonna be. It's going to be a lot of scoring, not a lot of, you know, breaks happening at all. It's just going to be very good holds from both NC State and Duke. Now, Duke does have the smaller team, as you may be able to see with within the frame. We'll have to see if NC State can't use that to their advantage at all. 
we'll get to get our first look here at Duke's offensive team see if they can make as much progress as NC State just did. Yeah, in such a short amount of time, too. Yeah. Looks like three minutes off the clock, and State already got one up on the board. Heave it down the field. <laughs> That's gonna go right out of play. <laughs> gotta love, gotta love the involvement of the bench there. <laughs> Duke's gonna bring it out, and that's one thing for our viewers just to keep in mind: there are no, no real officials or refs. Uh, what instead there is, passive observers. Excuse me. You'll see them in the orange shirts along the sidelines. They are there to kind of settle disputes in a way. Um, and what a wow. absolute heave there from he hugged Duke. it. Oh, oh and he wow. snags it. Just a beautiful, beautiful counterattack too. That yeah. was that was very quick. Now NC State's going to bring out their offensive team. I wonder if we'll see more of that tonight from Duke. Just more just long passes instead of what NC State did methodically working it down the field. Now, if this game's supposed to be at 13, and if they're scoring this quickly, I may not be out here very long. Yeah. It'd be a very short one here, <laughs> yeah, folks. Absolutely. Except they take their time to celebrate their, their goals. They earned it. They, they earned, earned celebration. it without a doubt. <laughs> now, Duke probably prepping their defense we're going to see, I believe that's Jeffrey He heave it on down the field towards NC State. That defense does not have a lot of height. No, but that one not. guy in the middle definitely brings up their average height by at least three inches. Yeah, I was about to say the same <laughs> thing. Like, that's a, that's a heck of a defensive seven they got there. He's their center. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> kind of the... the the center back, if you will, that just kind of <laughs> the big body that kind of threatens the offense in a way. It'll be hard to get a disc over oh, or yeah. around. Without a doubt. And all right, the disc is back in play. And now NC State will be on the attack. See a long, Ooh, long throw pass. here. Oh, he's just going to kind of walk with it. They were looking for a quick score. Oh, wow, Looks quick like score get it. there. That was yeah. just, wow. Man. At 69 minutes, they've already scored NC State up 2-1. to one. Yeah. You almost got to think that the team is running out there to meet them just to kind of warm up a little bit. <laughs> it is a very chilly night here down at Lower Method Road Field. It's not, not ideal conditions. Absolutely not. Now, if we were in, you know, more of a press box, I wouldn't be complaining. But <laughs> I know, no, that would be <laughs> not, nice. Not, not that a little fancy space here. here. There you go. My phone says it is 45 degrees outside right now. Man, it feels way it colder. It feels than colder that. than that. <laughs> we got that for wind you, chill for you folks listening at home. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy the heat. It is. <laughs> it's very cold out here. Seem to take their time on these, on these pools. Mm -hmm. Just kind of set up their defense. Yep. Talk things out. I mean, although not much defense. Yeah, to speak exactly. Of so far in this game, about to say the same thing. It's like state looked like they had a strong defensive press, and then it just ended up in the end zone almost <laughs> immediately. Yeah. And now NC State's going to get things underway. Is that going to curve? Oh, curves back in. with the oh. handlers trying to find a cutter moving Having in and out back pedal a little bit there and that's one other thing no contact is allowed with this you are allowed to defend as you're seeing here where they kind of encroach on the the, the thrower's space but this is a non-contact sport 
players will call their own fouls if they see fit. Duke looking for anything to move the disc down the field. You can see the height there. Yeah, slight difference. See that with Mapes. Got a little more progress. Beautiful looking for throw a, in there. The back in the end zone. Gets it. <laughs> and a little he just, spike. Yeah, looking like a Gronk spike <laughs> out there. That was Peterson with the catch. Very impressive offenses we're seeing here. That's what we were warned about tonight. Yeah, exactly. Very high powered. It's a nice throw to the back of the end zone. Just got behind the defense. Evens it up now. NC State and Duke tied 2-2. Two to two. With only nine minutes off the clock <laughs> so far. Again, just a reminder, said in the pregame, but this is first to 13, 90 minutes total in the game with a 75 minute soft cap, 80 minute hard cap. And it's not looking like we'll need to yeah, I mean need to utilize the soft or the hard cap. That's what I'm saying. It's they keep scoring as quickly as this. Halftime takes place when the first team scores seven points. So we could see a, a quick halftime. Yeah, here. exactly. <laughs> we may, yeah, we may not even make it all the way to this soft cap, like Ooh. you said. Now Duke about ready to get things underway. I've noticed the, the coaches, it looks like, come out and talk to their teams right. just to drop a play or something before they before they pull it. So maybe we can see more defensive production here on Duke's end. Right. <coughs> but as things have been trending, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> now Duke... Launches it downfield. Now State's going to get that went out of bounds. State's going to bring it in. Back into play. We just got word if it starts, if it goes out of bounds, they will start in the middle in that, that yellow box there. Right. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But He's going to dump it back now just to kind of get a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, a little bit of a trap there by Duke. And this could turn out to be good for State. Oh, wow. It's a good catch. The defender Just cut in front of the defender. Fell there, and what a beautiful oh, wow. pass in. And that's another score by State. They're really, they, it almost seems like they haven't even needed to use all 20 yards of the end zone. They're just kind of <laughs> dinking it right there in the, in the front. Just finding the room in front of the defense. It's almost like this field is too small. <laughs> Nonetheless, they could, they could start extended into the street a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do apologize though. This, it's a little more difficult to tell which state players are which because they don't have numbers, and the guest commentator hasn't arrived yet. But now it looks like NC State's head coach. Getting one last word in with the with the defensive side. Uh, I wonder w what coaching goes into it if you know the other team's going to score. Yeah, it honestly. Can't be much you can say <laughs> to your defensive unit. Just like, hey, hold them as long as you can. And and that's one thing also that's really important is NC State got, the, got to be on offense first. So you, you got to think that that's going to play a huge role if this game continues to just go back and forth. NC State will just end up with 13. One goal ahead of yeah. ahead of Duke. I really love that bench involvement. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice curving through there. Seems like they always try to get it back to the yeah the middle there. Number 25 is Evan Mapes. Evan Mapes. Oh, a little bit of a miscommunication there, and that's gonna, Being that's gonna turn. Throw. Yeah, that's the first turnover we've seen this game. So State will go on the offensive side. 
There's maybe like a sort of miscommunication there between the back line and the the handlers and the cutters. Yeah, because there was not a, a white jersey in sight. Uh-uh. It almost looked like he was going the way that the, the thrower kind of noticed, but then cut back or something like that. And it was, Seems to be. Looks like the observer is going to have his ball. two cents here, and it's going to go State's way. Or excuse me, rather, that's it's going to go Duke's way. That's another turnover. Okay. Nonetheless, Duke going to be able to have a chance of tying it up here. Yeah, that could have been. And there oh he goes. Wow. Uh, dunked on him, if you will. <laughs> that's a nice catch. Just over the defender. NC State had a chance to extend their lead there, but and just couldn't get, big. couldn't get the ball, or excuse me, the, the, <laughs> the Frisbee off in time. Similar similar shapes. <laughs> They're both circles, right? <laughs> One's 3D. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But yeah, no, Duke manages to tie it up now, 3-3. That would have been huge if State could have converted on Yeah, for sure. Gone down the field, gone up two goals. Nice. See, the players are starting to heat up a little bit, taking off their jackets and what is not it. <laughs> I'm gonna stay nice and warm over here, though. We'll we'll try. This yeah, yeah, <laughs> almost, almost. We can't make any promises. <laughs> Pretty good turnout as well for men's ultimate. You can only expect to see roughly the same amount at the women's game later th this evening. NC State will be taking on Duke in the women's matchup as well. So if you want to see more ultimate, just stick around. It should be just as exciting. Now, the the club president did mention that, uh, or excuse me, the club president, Rowan, of um, the women's team did mention that the men's men's teams might have more high-powered offense, but you got to wonder, that kind of makes for a more interesting game, having having those breaks where uh, there's a turnover or something and the defense gets a, gets a shot at scoring. Because it's almost like this is... For this men's game, it's almost scripted, if you will. Where <laughs> they have to see yeah, each you possession. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the uh, the forehand throws. Yeah, that must be difficult to to throw it like I can, that. I, I can do it with a, a Disc golf, yeah. Disc, but that's I can't, that's I can't. how I throw in disc golf. Yeah, exactly. With a normal frisbee. Yeah, I. Can't, I oh, can't and they're agree. calling that a, a score for NC State. Yeah, they're gonna get themselves back up on top. I just, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It's like if I try and throw it forehand with anything other than a disc golf disc, I'm, it's I don't know where that thing's going. <laughs> About 15 minutes in, 16 minutes in now. State is up 4-3. to three. It's going by pretty quickly so far. Oh, yeah. It slowed down a little bit since the first six minutes, though. Right. Where it was just score after score, almost yeah. seemingly as if they were playing against, like, <laughs> nobody. <nothing. laughs> yeah. Just warming up, throwing the disc down the field. Like, there was nobody in front of them. Mm -hmm. Now Duke's going to get another chance to tie it up. There's a excited dog behind us. <laughs> yeah, if you hear any barking or any <laughs> loud noises. It is he's just having, a dog. <laughs> yeah, he's having a great time back there. He's having fun. With, he's not getting hurt. The, yeah. He's having. He's playing his own version of uh, <laughs> the ultimate back there. I kind of want to go join him, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, NC State doing that chant with the, that the band usually does at uh, basketball and football <laughs> games. They're simulating. They're yeah, simulating they're the basketball environment. There you go. Just putting that Georgia Tech loss out of their mind. Yeah, exactly. Now, <laughs> now it would be great if um, NC State, in uh, in this case, could uh, oh, preferably wow. not. Just completely unguarded on yeah, the list. Preferably not just, you know, let up a last second, <laughs> last second basket slash goal. Oh, wow, beautiful throw. I want to see a dive. Oh. Didn't have to. Didn't have to. Didn't yeah. have to get that pristine white jersey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he had the wheels for it. Honestly, if I was in his position, I would have gotten my jersey a little dirty just to show it off. Yeah, exactly. It's and like wear hey. it around campus. Yeah, I do it. For <laughs> <the disc. laughs> He'd be like, hey, I, <laughs> I, I did some. 
Zion might be cool, but uh, I do for Frisbee. So, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> guys, come on. <laughs> that was Ryan Mann on the receiving end of that score for Duke. Just it's a put beautiful on, assist. Yeah, uh, for sure. You just put on the wheels and. So tied up four four. Neither team can can really get any separation. With such good offense, it's seemingly like they're not going to be able to. No, neither team's going to be able to pull ahead. Yeah. Now both teams getting uh, coached up a little bit. Although with this much scoring, you might you might think at some point you'll see a little bit of complacency maybe. Like, oh, we'll score. We don't have to yeah, try exactly. as hard. And then might see a turnover. And then the tides could turn very easily. Yeah, exactly. Very good point. But as of now, no such, no such tides yeah. are turning. Tides are maintaining. <laughs> and now Duke gonna get this ultimate game underway once more. really impressive how they're able to able to get the disc away with such a close defender on them. You'd think it would get smacked away yeah. very easily. That was a wobbly little throw, but turns hey, out okay it for State. Now the wind's starting to pick up. That may, one, that freeze everybody <laughs> up, two, but play a Could huge very factor. Very well factor in. Yeah. But not there. Not there. <laughs> State able to. A little jump and catch for the score. It's really confusing because some of the players for state have numbers and some of them don't. However, I'm just confused because the team captain was telling me that they weren't going to have numbers, but that looks like numbers to me. <laughs> yeah, well, we have to make do with what we have, yeah. so we'll just we'll convey who scored what as best we can. Yeah. But for now, we just know that they're state and they're Duke. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> State in the black, Duke in the white. It's and that's crucial to know. That's that's uh, one thing that I've always found funny is that whenever State seemingly wears black jerseys in really any sport, especially basketball, it, it just okay. doesn't really seem to work out. And we just got word that our guest commentator is on the way, so Great. we will have expert analysis <laughs> for you here shortly. Exactly. <laughs> We're just kind of. Fill in the space. Yeah, exactly. We we, we kind of know what we're talking about. <laughs> I've seen a frisbee before. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and the wind is I, starting to get. I a gotta say consistent. though, I've I've played ultimate before, and it is intense. Well, I mean, it is the ultimate. <laughs> game. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like it is, it's actually really fun. I just wasn't any good at it. So <laughs> <laughs> it was hard to have fun when you when you weren't weren't putting up kind of the numbers you expect. And what I'm noticing here is... Oh, that's going to be uh, a turnover. And that could be huge. That that's turnover that's that close to right. the end zone could be huge for NC State. That's going to be a really big, really big momentum and shift if they're able to score here. It looks like uh, they did. They are able yeah. to. Just like that, State now up two on Duke. And that could be huge factoring into the second half. But one thing that I'm noticing is uh, that Duke tries to get it to one handler, it looks like, or one main handler. And NC State, it looks like all their players are getting involved. Are at least competent handlers. Yeah, right. not to say Duke's players are incompetent handlers, right. but it looks like they have their main quarterback, if you will. Yeah. And, and he just missed that high throw, which... I mean, looking at his height, it's, it must have been hard to overcome. <laughs> yeah. him. But State now up 6-4. About 23 minutes past. And I, that indicates with State's next score, we should be seeing halftime if what we were told is correct. I got to say, though, they're scoring so quickly, it's almost like maybe they'll try and 
put a few more points on the board instead. About to get underway here once more. We have Trevor Lynch on the pole, currently a sophomore. And just in case you couldn't tell, our guest commentator is here now. Uh, <laughs> he, he, yeah. Now Duke gonna be able to start from the half line. See NC State coming out in the zone look with three players up front to put some pressure on the disc. Trying to force the disc towards the sideline, make it harder to advance upfield. Great defense there, though, from State. Absolutely. Uh, they do an excellent job of getting a lot of bodies under the disc, especially on those deep shots. That's going to be the second turnover that NC State has forced now. Captain Michael Lee picking up. Dishes to Trevor Lynch, who puts it deep back to Michael Lee. It's a high floater. It appears Michael Lee's calling a strip, so he may send the call to the observer. And it looks like they're going to get it. Michael Lee immediately calls a timeout, so his team will have some time to set up and figure out how to work the disc into the end zone. Now, 25 minutes almost past, NC State up 6-4. So, why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. My name's Alex Lander. I'm currently a sophomore on NC State Alpha. I uh, have to apologize for coming late. Oh, Just no, no class. worries at all. <laughs> it's nice because we're going to have a little bit more of a expert analysis, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Absolutely. Glad I can help. So I'm under the impression that, at least this is what I heard from uh, the uh, women's club president, I believe. They will be playing to 13. Are you, are you aware of that at all? Or Yes, the game should be a 13, so... Okay. Uh, Halftime should be called when one team reaches seven points. Which so could very well happen right here. Exactly. Okay. So this is a huge opportunity for NC State to capitalize, uh, especially on a D point. Uh, it's what we call the break. This is right. their opportunity to steal a chance from Duke's O-line. Great. And so with the amount of men's ultimate games you've seen, is it often that we reach the soft cap or the hard cap? Because this has been really high-powered offense going so far. Uh, typically in the tournament format, games tend to draw on. Uh, okay. However, weather is a large factor into that. On uh, days that when sense. there's a lot of wind going on, uh, points will take much longer. Deep shots are a lot harder to get off. And the game uh, may only make it to 11 or 12 points. However, gotcha. this game's moving right along. Yeah, seriously. Because, I, I mean, I've... You know, dabbled in ultimate every now and then, but the beautiful diving catch from Henry Poe. It was just really impressive. And he that's slips it, it right upfield. And now it looks like NC State's gonna hit that. <laughs> He's gonna give it to a fan to spike it. And NC State's gonna reach seven. That's gonna put us at halftime. For now, Duke down three. 48, 23 left on the clock. But that's going to do it for the first half for now. We'll be right back with more action here at Lower Method Road Field. NC State Television is the Wolfpack's new home for academic events on campus. Missed an interesting talk? Want to catch up on last week's conference? Or did your friend just give a great presentation that you have to see? Check out NC State TV on Wolf TV Channel 32.1 and on our new Roku and Apple TV apps. At Potbelly, everything you find is a little bit happier, sweeter, fresher, groovier, and yummier. Why? Because at Potbelly, we know it's never enough to just eat lunch. You gotta feed your smile. Swing by for our new turkey club. 
handcrafted to make you smile. Wolf Bites Radio brings you the biggest names in EDM with the Open Mic Podcast. Hey guys, it's DJ What The Heck, and join me, Brandon Boucher, and other Wolf Bites DJs as we interview musical guests from the EDM world. Open Mic dives deeper into the artists' lives on and off stage, bringing you closer to the music. Listen to Open Mic Podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and wolfbites.ncsu.edu. back just wanted to provide a little bit of an update we just got received word that halftime shouldn't take too long uh, we just wanted to provide the update real quick that uh, halftime should take five to ten minutes depending on um, you know how the players are feeling but NC State currently up seven to four uh, the soft cap is 75 minutes and we have barely even put a dent in that only 30 minutes have passed in the game NC State up against Duke in this men's ultimate game Seven to four. We'll be right back with the second half of action. At Potbelly, everything you find is a little bit happier, sweeter, fresher, groovier, and yummier. Why? Because at Potbelly, we know it's never enough to just eat lunch. You gotta feed your smile. Swing by for our new turkey club, handcrafted to make you smile. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your one-stop shop for all things Wolfpack. Located in the Ridgewood Shopping Center off of Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop recently expanded from 2,400 to 5,400 square feet. Whether you're in need of tailgating essentials, decals and magnets, home goods, apparel for people of all ages, or sporting goods, the Red and White Shop has it all. Stop by today for your NC State needs. I was diagnosed at 65. 37. Earlier than most. Every nine minutes, someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And every one of them can turn to the American Parkinson Disease Association. Visit APDAParkinson.org to learn more and show your support today. Oh, hey, bud. Where, uh, where are you headed? Uh, I'm just gonna hang out. With Gary and Todd? Yeah. I've been meaning to ask you, is there any drinking going on in this crowd? No. If any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I'd do anything to keep you safe. Okay, I will. I hope this is working. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. So halftime's taking a little bit longer than we thought. The players are out there warming up right now. The observers are kind of meeting just to kind of discuss what they've been seeing, how they've been calling it. Um, NC State up 7-4 to four against Duke in this men's ultimate game. Just the players kind of warming up a little bit more just to kind of get their, their legs warm. It is a very chilly night, completely understandable. But nonetheless, we'll be starting soon. We'll be right back. NC State Television is the Wolfpack's new home for academic events on campus. Missed an interesting talk? Want to catch up on last week's conference? Or did your friend just give a great presentation that you have to see? Check out NC State TV on Wolf TV Channel 32.1 and on our new Roku and Apple TV apps. At Potbelly, everything you find is a little bit happier, sweeter, fresher, groovier, and yummier. Why? Because at Potbelly, 
We know it's never enough to just eat lunch. You gotta feed your smile. Swing by for our new turkey club, handcrafted to make you smile. Wolf Bites Radio brings you the biggest names in EDM with the Open Mic Podcast. Hey guys, it's DJ What The Heck, and join me, Brandon Boucher, and other Wolf Bites DJs as we interview musical guests from the EDM world. Open Mic dives deeper into the artists' lives on and off stage, bringing you closer to the music. Listen to Open Mic Podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and wolfbites.ncsu.edu. Welcome back to Method Road Fields. Blake alongside Alex here, ready for the second half of action. NC State up 7-4 against Duke in men's ultimate. Very chilly night. Wind starting to pick up just a little bit. Might play a factor in the game as a whole. Nonetheless, really looking forward to an exciting second half. Only 35 minutes off the clock so far. 40 minutes left in this first until the stop, soft cap, excuse me. And uh, Alpha put up a really strong first half. From what I understand, it was all holds up to 5-4, meaning there were no breaks. However, uh, Alpha closed out the half with two consecutive breaks to gain this three-point lead, and they're coming out on D again. A uh, break here would be huge to put them in position to close out the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're, they're ready to close out the game just because it's so freaking cold. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, there's players, like, running around along the sidelines just to kind of stay warm. Seeing some antics on the line from <laughs> yeah. uh, junior Hunter Schumacher. Hopefully he doesn't injure himself <laughs> yeah, exactly. before he gets to play. Duke finishing up their team huddle, getting ready to get back out there on offense. Observers getting in position as well. Now, it should be noted that uh, most games in Ultimate are not observed uh, due to the volunteer nature of it and the limited number of observers in the country. Uh, it's pretty rare that most games have even one observer, uh, let alone three. Uh, <laughs> so it's truly a privilege for these players to have uh, these resources available. And, and that's one thing that, you know, it kind of comes new to a, a viewer. Usually, you know, with any sporting event, you expect to see some sort of official, but in terms of ultimate, a lot of the calls are made by the players themselves. Absolutely, and for those of you who are unclear on the format, uh, players have the right and responsibility to make calls themselves. However, when observers are present, uh, their one or both players are able to choose to send the final decision to an observer upon a conflict. Uh, junior Risk Gretsch uh, will pull to kick off the second half. And a fast turnover as Duke just throws it away upfield. May have been a little bit of a miscommunication there, but it just gave it right away. Absolutely, and if Alpha can capitalize here, it'll be huge for them. Schumacher with an around break to the sideline to senior Troy Miller. Back to Schumacher. Oh! An inside look to Michael Lee, but he's unable to contain it, and Duke will pick it up on their own line. We're seeing great pressure up front from Alpha as it's very hard for Duke to move the disc up field and they're forced to uh, rely on more lateral movement and just keep the disc in their possession. Right, just kind of playing it around the back, just trying to look to an open yeah. man up front. They're able to slip through right up the middle, but unable to continue after that and Alpha's able to reset their defense.
Two points more having to go back. So what you're seeing right now from Alpha is his zone look. They have three players up front guarding the main disc handlers uh, with about three players in the midfield and one helping out deep. Duke just can't seem to get anything going past like three quarters of the way. Excuse me, one quarter of the way. Just keep having to go back. Seems to be an open man downfield, but. Absolutely. And they'll try and go to him. Jeffrey Head throws up the middle, and Josh Smith is able to collect it. Oh. Looks back to Head, but the throw is too low, and it's back to Alpha's disc. Gretch walking to pick up with uh, fellow junior Michael Lee in the backfield. Schumacher setting the stack. Around to Schumacher. Schumacher pumps the around and throws a lofty sky ball to sophomore Trevor Lynch. He's unable to bring it in. That was good defense there from Duke's side. Absolutely. His man was right where he needed to be despite the height mismatch. You see a little bit of good spirit going on there between the two as the, they exchange high fives uh, after the play. Duke taking the disc back up to their own line. We'll have to see if Duke can't make it past the, the half field line this time. Absolutely. Alpha seems to have switched the force from the far side of the field to the side closer to us. The beautiful hammer over the top finds a man right in space. So we see Alpha transition more into man. Schumacher on the mark. That's interesting because the zone seemed to be working earlier. Absolutely. However, as they advance downfield, uh, they risk the shorter throws becoming more penetrating. And uh, massive layout from Schumacher, and he immediately picks up and looks deep. So there's going to be right on the sideline, but just a little too far out of bounds for senior Henry Poe. That was almost a spectacular counter there. Absolutely, and Schumacher is certainly known for his uh, outstanding throws and consistency. Now, one thing that I, I personally find interesting is that picks and screens are actually illegal in, in Ultimate. Yes, and it uh, really plays into the um, supposed non-contact nature of the sport. High blade going about half the distance of the field for Duke. And Alpha's back into man. Uh, there's a huge uh, part of the sport centered around not impeding the motion right. or ability to play the sport by members of the other team. Brimstone knocking on the door, but Alpha applying heavy pressure. There seems to be a stoppage. Gonna resume play now. A quick little upfield pass will get it done for Brimstone, but not without taking over five minutes off the clock. Yeah, I was about to say that's the longest we've seen this game go on without a goal. We see some of the members who are on the field for Alpha just hanging their heads as uh, they really wanted that one back and certainly had more than enough opportunities, but. Uh, there's plenty to be said for the stifling defense and the amount that made Brimstone struggle oh, on that yeah. point. Without a doubt. And so one thing that me and Bennett kind of noticed was that the, like the resuming of play seems to take a certain amount of time. Is that just because the, the coaches are kind of getting in their two cents during that time? Yeah, absolutely. Between points, uh, there's a timer of 70 seconds uh, before the team must pull. Uh, and that's 
much more heavily enforced uh, with observers on the field as they're responsible for keeping that time uh, and letting the teams know when it's time to play. However, uh, when observers aren't present, uh, that can drag on. Uh, it's mainly an opportunity for the coaches to uh, let the team know what they're looking for defensively, uh, what kind of look they want to come out with, who they want to match up on offensively, either what pull play they might run or what their main objectives are. That's interesting. It's almost like a kind of like a built-in timeout, if you will. <laughs> exactly. And it's certainly a nice little rest for the oh, players. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Junior Connor Chikas will take the centering pass from senior Drew Bunting. Looks upfield to Jeffrey Perkins and freshman Dylan Hawkins on the field with the disc in his hands on the sideline. Finding sophomore Matt Tucker. Alpha's just going straight up the line. Senior Bailey Liberto easily finds Connor Chicas, who's running away with the disc, but <laughs> it took them less than a minute yeah. and a half to go from one end zone to the other. Clearly, whatever uh, coach was telling him during that break was uh, <laughs> it, it did it did work. No doubt. The pace of play certainly plays into uh, the momentum for both teams. Right. Uh, to be able to uh, make an offense struggle for so long and then to have your own offense uh, work it down so easily and score. Definitely plays a pretty big psychological role, just kind of knowing that they can score so easily. We're going to put a score of 8-5 to five now in favor of... NC State, it's alpha. Still plenty of game left here. Uh, for those of you who are true fans, you'll remember that last year, uh, alpha was up 6-1 on UNC before falling 13-9 uh, later in the game. So greater comebacks have occurred. <laughs> One can only hope that that does not happen this time. <laughs> Gretsch will pull again and will make its way most of the way down the field. Float slowly down. Duke will collect it. Duke with a deep shot, and it's right into the bread basket of a cutter. It's looking for options, but not quite finding anyone yet. He had a man down in the end zone. He just couldn't get it to him. Low pass to the front pylon. They are able to pass up line and score at last. A much quicker possession there from Duke than their last one. Absolutely, and it seems they made some adjustments. It was hard to tell. Alpha was coming out with uh, some sort of a zone look or what we call a junk where uh, there may be two or three players near the disc uh, just kind of clogging up the lanes to slow down play before transitioning into man. So now that's going to put a score of 8-6. to six. We'll have to see if NC State's high-powered offense can once more score within you know a minute or less right and alpha certainly made a name for themselves with their pace of play uh so far this season as well as last season uh it was their real advantage in the way in which they took advantage of their uh athleticism over other teams so right. we'll see if they can continue that looking on the line uh, there's only two or three players under six feet tall yeah, I was about to say, the average height of NC State is surprising, being uh, under six feet myself. <laughs> uh, it's like kind of disappointing. It's like, man, I wish I was that tall. <laughs> Absolutely, but if it makes you feel any better, some of the best players in the country are not even 5'5". Five five. That does just, make uh, me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> just forced to develop a slightly different set of skills and uh, generally avoid uh, going up for the disc with taller players. Right. So now, does height play a like more critical role in what kind of position you're playing? Certainly. Uh, shorter players who make it to this level of the sport are forced more to rely on their throws and uh, game knowledge. Uh, so you might find them more in a handler role sure. or handler-defender role 
uh, whereas taller players are far more of an asset uh, further down the field. Of course, um, yeah. So they can be found deep. Paul James bobbles the disc on the <laughs> yeah. sideline, but is able to reel it in. Ooh. And throws up line to Liberto, who is not going to call a foul on that, and it will be Duke's disc with an opportunity to break. However, they're going to have to go the full 70 yards. We see Junior Awesome Van Alten on the mark. That's some excellent down, uh, backfield defense by Alpha, uh, forcing them all the way to the other side of the field just to keep it going. You can see the Brimstone supporters there in the, in the shot. Looks like their women's, Duke women's team is here. Yes, immediately afterwards, uh, we'll have uh, Duke swerve up against NC State Yega. Connor Chico is likely calling a pick, as we talked about earlier. Right. His motion uh, to go defend the disc was impeded by another uh, cutter on the other team. Uh, part of what's interesting about the pick call in Ultimate, Paul James close on that uh, cross-field reset. And Duke just turning it away, overthrowing a man. Roberto giving his team a second to set up on the sideline before picking up. But uh, part of what's interesting about that pick call in Ultimate is that you can actually call it against another defender. It doesn't just have to be against someone on the other team. Right. So as a defender, it's truly uh, any impedance in your motion and play of the disc. Avery Acherno in space, back to Chicas. The three of them are just working around the backfield right now. Chicas Liberto and Cherna being patient and looking for an opportunity to work into the end zone. There's another stoppage, maybe a pick downfield. Oh, that was that was given to him on a platter. Absolutely. <laughs> Paul James just firing one to Liberto, but uh, he drops in the end zone, so it'll be Duke's chance again. Very interesting, though, how this second half has started, just with that high-powered first half. Absolutely. A deep shot from Duke, but it's off the hands. Roberto picking up right away, finding Von Allen, who just walks to the disc. Cherno looking around, being forced to reset to Liberto. Roberto fires a laser to freshman Dylan Hawkins, and that'll do it for Alpha, bringing us to 9-6. Just one step closer to that 13 that they're looking for. That's going to put them at a three-point lead now. And... NC State hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down or letting Duke get back into this game after that. The end of that first half just able to kind of pull away a little bit. Absolutely. And uh, as we can see, Duke's fighting to stay in it. They're not going to roll over. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with it, uh, there's an allocation of bids to the national tournament at the end of the season. Uh, there are 20 spots for teams in the first division. So uh, there's an algorithm used by a governing body, USA Ultimate, that determines uh, which regions will uh, receive how many bids. Currently, uh, the Atlantic Coast uh, region, which uh, houses both NC State uh, Duke, along with teams like UNC Wilmington, UNC Charlotte, uh, and currently the national defending champions, uh, UNC Chapel Hill. Dang, you hate to see that. <laughs> you do indeed. Uh, they have a strong squad. Uh, so far undefeated this year, and we'll see if they can continue that trend all the way to the end. Um, certainly sitting as the favorites right now for nationals once again, but uh, every point counts in this algorithm as to... Uh, each team's official positioning uh, in relation to the total college rankings. And um, we see NC State coming out with this zone look again, three men up front, but Duke finds a way around it to the sideline. 
This is actually part of the objective of Alpha in a situation like this to get the disc on the sideline, but uh, preferably not leave people open downfield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that was... Trevor Lynch flying yeah. through the air, but just a little too far away to make a play on it. That's going to cut State's lead to 2 now, 9-7 with 22 minutes left before the soft cap. So how has NC State season this season gone thus far? Uh, it's gone fantastic. They came out with a strong showing at Carolina kickoff, uh, which was hosted by uh, UNC Chapel Hill, uh, where they made it all the way to the finals against Chapel Hill and put up uh, actually one of the best games against Chapel Hill so far this season, losing 15-12. Uh, but certainly one of their best showings and one of the best showings by any teams against the defending champions this season. Uh, then they head down to Charlotte for Queen City Tune-Up, uh, where they took a tough loss uh, in semifinals to UMass Amherst. Uh, they ended up losing 17-16 in a uh. real nail-biter. Uh, uh, the game actually didn't even make it to a cap. Uh, it was a point cap at 17, so they would have kept playing to win by two based on the way the game was going, uh, but ended up taking third after uh, defeating uh, in-region rival uh, UNC Wilmington uh, for the first time, actually, in the last four or five years. Wow. Um, State has not been able to beat Wilmington until now, uh, so certainly an indication of the way things are going for them this season. That's great. So our most, as NC State's bench gets into it again, <laughs> our, our most uh, ultimate. She just immediately yeah, hugs to sophomore Matt Tucker, who's wide open, just completely unmarked as he jogs towards the end zone and is staying right on the line. Yeah, oh, bad turn over there. Looking for a reset to a Cherno, but defender in the way. He picks up the mark on the sideline. So, sorry, what I was saying earlier, just because that pass was beautiful. Um, yeah. the Are most ultimate games, or are they set up in like a tourney style most of the time, it seems like? Yes. Okay. Uh, so generally, uh, as a factor of just the fact that teams are spread out across the country. And Ryan Mann making a sliding catch into the end zone. But finds himself right on the line. I'm gonna call a timeout, I believe. We'll give us a quick break. But uh, yes, pretty much the entire format of Ultimate uh, is tournament style, usually with pool play and perhaps a crossover game on Saturday, and then usually heading straight into quarterfinals Sunday morning okay. uh, with the afternoon wrapping up, usually around three or four. Uh, Larger tournaments such as nationals may be spread out over three days to uh, allow for a little more rest. But uh, ultimate as a whole, both college, club, uh, and even on the professional level is truly restricted by the fact that uh, uh, these players can't afford to play full time. So right. uh, at the college level, you know, they can only afford a Saturday and Sunday between right. school. Uh, and even at the club level, which uh, reaches the international scale, uh, players have you know, work Monday morning or yeah, Friday afternoon exactly. and I uh, can't just give up three or four days for a tournament. So uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how that develops over the next few decades uh, as Ultimate continues to grow. Uh, but right now it's a huge part of the way the sport is played. Um, you know, teams really have to plan uh, to be tired. Right. Uh, you know, coming into that last game on Saturday and Sunday morning, you know, having your starters already having played up yeah. to four, sometimes even five games the day before, and being expected to go face a higher level of competition. Duke picking up right on the end line, but not really finding anything upfield, so they're uh, forced to resort to a backfield throw. And a laser straight ahead. Duke's able to capitalize on their chance. That's going to cut State's lead to one now. Duke creeping right back here with seven, or excuse me, a little under 18 minutes left until this sock cap. Yeah, that's huge for them. Uh, this break, you know, not only brings the score closer, but every break uh, certainly takes a hit on any team's offensive line. Right. Appears Alpha may have called the timeout to try to break the rhythm of Duke right. and regain some composure. 
it's, it's, go go, go, oh, I was just going to say, it seems like this is a, a pretty huge... This, this sport is very momentum heavy. Like, once one team starts scoring, it just, like, it doesn't seem to stop. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and even though there's time between points, uh, it really seems to follow basketball in that way of rest yeah. versus rhythm. Uh, teams usually only being allotted two or three timeouts per game, so they are forced to use them wisely. Right. Uh, either to rest their players or uh, set themselves up before an end zone play or, uh, you know, like this, uh refocus and get themselves back in the game but uh you know the sidelines play a huge role in that with only seven people on the field usually more than two-thirds of the team is on the sideline yeah uh they're responsible for communicating to the people on the field who usually don't have full view around them uh as well as you know being the hype squad being the yeah. people who uh get up when uh, someone makes a large player even just when their team scores uh Ultimate really is most similar to basketball in that way. Right. Uh, just in that the energy of the team is reliant on all the players uh, and has a huge influence in what happens on the field. Uh, you'll notice a strong correlation both ways between the plays that are made uh, and the attitude of the players right. uh, as well as what's going on off the field. Yeah, because that was one thing that but before, you, before you got here we were kind of mentioning is that it was really impressive just – I mean, now State's – bench is a lot a lot bigger than, than Duke's is but uh, they're just constantly involved the entire game and, and they're just chilling over there on the sideline certainly uh, and you'll see uh, especially at tournaments that players will even go to both sidelines uh, which you don't really see in pretty much any other sport but players from both teams will you know be walking the full length of the field really from back pylon to yeah. back pylon on both sides Duke with a bladey pull, it's Chicas is gonna let it hit the ground before centering to Liberto. We see Matt Tucker isolated in space. Uh oh. Von Alton on a short under, but it's off his hand. He's up on the mark on a uh, high school teammate of his actually, Jeffrey Ha. Two of them went oh. to North Carolina School of Science and Math. Oh, that's cool. Beautiful floating huck out to space. Berto bringing pressure. There's no call, so it's going to be Alpha's disc once again. They'll have yeah, another chance. I was about to say, that, I feel like that could have gone another way, but it looks like the Duke player kind of took blame for not being able to catch it. Absolutely. Uh, there's certainly some contact, maybe even to his back, but uh, I guess he just didn't feel that uh, it impeded his play. All right. Chica's finding uh, senior Jeffrey Perkins in the middle of the field. <coughs> who looks deep to Von Allen, who breaks away from his cutter. He's able to attack the disc all by himself. And finds himself with some time before dishing back to Perkins. Oh, no. A little bit of a miscommunication there. Seems he may have been targeting fellow senior Wesley Dudas, but just a little off the mark. Another stoppage is indicated by the observer on the other side. Likely a pick call, and you can see alpha players with their hands on their knees. Uh, defense and ultimate is quite tiring and uh, takes a large toll on their stamina. Yeah, literally, just like watching that first half, I was I was very impressed with how much running this this entails. Absolutely. Backhand hug coming up. Did Wesley he? Dewis able to get in front of it though and knock it down in the end zone and give his chance his team another shot at redemption. Yeah, with Duke just slowly but surely cutting into this lead, NC State's gonna want to take anything they can get. No doubt. You see Matt Tucker again isolated in space all by himself and again to Von Alton. Centering to Liberto, and continuing across the field to Chicas. And one thing I kind of noticed was that... Chicas oh. 
with a beautiful end zone shot to Von Alten. It's just right into his chest. Nothing his defender could have done about that. That was a beautiful throw. But uh, I was going to say, it's like if there is a possession with like multiple turnovers, that could be really taxing on both sides of the of the disc. It's just like I, that's running for days. <laughs> Certainly. It, it truly becomes a war of attrition over the course of even just a few minutes. Uh, you know, most points may wrap up an under two, but once it starts to extend past five, uh, it really takes a toll on them. Uh, as we said, especially defense. Uh, and if you're unlucky enough to have your man continuously cutting deep on you, oh, uh, you could be running up to you know 30 or 40 yards in each direction, but being forced to follow them as they cut back towards the disc so they don't gain yeah. a big, easy under. Now, 11.30 left till the 75 minutes is up. NC State looking at a 10-8 lead over Duke now. Duke about to receive the pull as the coaches kind of get their last few words in. Indeed, and it seems like perhaps another timeout may have been called. So oh yeah, because we got reaching past the 72nd mark and we see Alpha's sideline huddling up. Right. <laughs> I mean, good grief. After a huge possession like that, I I think I'd want a timeout as well. I was gonna say it's interesting that it's a running clock, but it, it makes, I mean, it makes perfect sense. I mean, I, I, I played soccer in high school, so pretty much the same concept. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll see how that, uh, it, it plays more of a role in, uh, you know, like the pool play games and right. helping games move along. Uh, as they can't just go on forever to yeah. 13. Uh, but there is some debate within the Ultimate community uh, as to how playoffs, uh, such as the semifinals and finals themselves, should be played out. Uh, those games uh, almost always have a cap themselves, uh, but it's usually due to travel restrictions of the teams. Oh, okay. Uh, whereas others, like myself, uh, believe that the best game might be played best with no time limit. Yeah, just let them play till 13. Or exactly. whatever the the uh, value is. Exactly. Gretch's pull going out of bounds, so Duke will bring it to the middle of the field. We see Schumacher sitting in the lane to cut off some straight downfield throws, but there's an open man on the far sideline. Great D there. And grad student Troy Miller able to get a run through D and just step up on it. Senior Poe with the disc making a nice upline cut, but he's looked off by Michael Lee, swinging it back across to Gretsch. See Gretsch very aggressive on his mark, just doing whatever he can to get around to that uh, space the mark's trying to protect. Ah. Uh. Gretsch with an inside look to Michael Lee, but it's not quite there. Sophomore Lynch on the mark. Oh, wow. Freshman Chris Cole with the layout to try to break up the play, but it's out of his reach. Oh. So close. That was pretty acrobatic as well. Dude. Looks like he might have injured himself oh, absolutely. unless he's just slow to get up. Certainly not the softest of fields out <laughs> <No>. here. <laughs> oh, man. Got to love these method road fields, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they just get ripped to shreds. I guess that's going to be another timeout called. But yeah, like you're saying, dude, I, these fields take such a beating. I can't imagine it being cold and the fact that it's basically dirt. <laughs> they really do. Uh, and I, I can tell you from experience, uh, cold ground hurts a lot more than warm ground. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, it's like Evan Mapes has been uh, able to stand up and seems to be fine, but just getting checked out to make sure he's okay. Uh, 
that's one of the characteristic things of Ultimate. Uh, you see the more you watch, especially at the higher level, is players just simply sacrificing their buys just to try to make a play on the disc. Right. Um, going to any extent, uh, I've seen uh, dislocated shoulders. I've seen someone bid face first into the ground. Gosh. Just doing whatever it takes. So, but if it's... So, as a non-contact sport, are injuries frequent or is it just you know in terms of like if they're doing stuff like we've just seen sacrificing their body then then we see them kind of happen yeah surprisingly uh there are lots of injuries in ultimate um kind of a mix of contact and Mm non-contact a lot of the non-contact ones come from players uh as we saw you know uh making their own decisions to try to go for a disc uh whether it's going up and landing weird on uneven ground or simply just throwing their body through the air. Uh, however, there are plenty of contact injuries as well, like, like that. that. <laughs> um, and usually it's a result of, uh, you know, players are running pretty much full speed in one direction um, and changing direction very quickly, uh, and it truly becomes a game of inches. Henry Poe with a oh, great shot to wrist scratch, and it just bounces off his hand. I was going to say, though, because like with the amount of cuts they do, I'd feel like I'd tear my ACL or something. Absolutely, <laughs> uh, and it, it's actually quite a prevalent injury in Ultimate. Good grief. Uh, mainly because of usually non-contact injuries yeah. uh, of players uh, just stepping wrong or getting hit in the knee, uh, but... Uh, with players running full speed, you know, at each other at opposite in opposite directions and changing direction very quickly, uh, not always able to see all their surroundings, um, it's very easy to inadvertently injure themselves or someone else. Dude just throwing it away in the backfield uh, on a missed reset. Schumacher picking it up and quickly dishing to Michael Lee. Could have been. It seems like a little bit of a frustration there with the Duke back line. Maybe just a miscommunication or something. That's going to put NC State back up three, 11 8 with 5.22 left until the 75 minute soft cap has reached. Yeah, Duke's certainly not happy about that. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, for both teams, every point truly counts when it comes to the algorithm. Mm-hmm. So uh, Alpha has uh, every desire to. You know, not let this te- uh, let this game go to waste and just get suck every point out of it that they possibly can. So with the soft cap, I was trying to understand a little bit more with uh, the women's club president. Is there a like a stoppage, like a break with the soft cap, or is they they just gonna go ahead and throw up the next? like 10 minutes and it should go from there. No, uh, play will typically uh, continue straight on through. Soft cap is uh, usually more, uh, the game will be played to two more than whatever uh, okay. the team in the lead well, is currently at. Still get to 13 here. <laughs> right, uh, for this game, yes. Uh, and hard cap, uh, which we probably won't encounter here, but hard cap when found uh, usually means you'll finish the point or depending on the progression of the point, just play the point after. Okay. So almost like a sudden death of sorts at sure. times. Freshman John Laney up on the mark. Now fellow freshman Matthew Klossa. So we see uh, Alpha working in some younger players, uh, whether just to get them some reps or uh, just get some fresh legs on the field. But right now we see four freshmen out there. John Laney, Matthew Klossa, uh, John Bradley, uh, and Robert McAllister. He's trying to get a stall call, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm discussing with the observer. Duke's going to stay with it, though. John Bradley on the mark. No Henry Poe. Junior Josh Smith unleashing a backhand, and it is right on the money for Duke. Now Duke with nine to State's 11, 240. Five left. I love that though that they they don't have like a break. 
the only break is like halftime, and then of course the timeouts. That just it keeps the flow of the game going, which I've I've always appreciated with soccer, and, and it's really awesome here too. I couldn't agree more. Uh, it certainly adds a factor to the game, uh, and it doesn't give a break unless it's earned. You right. Know, yeah, whether exactly. it's between points or with one of your limited timeouts, uh, it really tests the endurance of players. Now he looks like he taking a jacket off, just trying to warm up a little bit or something <laughs> while he was on the, yeah. the sidelines. Can't blame him at all, though. Looks like half Duke's sideline, even State's got some sort of warmth on. Oh, yeah. It, the temperature has really dropped since we got out here. <laughs> it really has. And uh, if you're, you know, especially if you're a younger player, uh, or if your line isn't getting many plays, just depending on how the game's going, you know, you could be sitting off for uh, up to five or ten minutes, if not more, and uh, yeah. that's when you really start to feel it. Uh, so players are forced to prepare and just, uh, you know, bring the appropriate materials to the field. Duke's going to get this underway with the pull. Senior Drew Bunting will receive it, and Saren Dechikas. Perkins getting open on the open side. Firing up line to Von Alton. Von Alton looking downfield. The Cherno able to go up and pick it out of the air. Again, Alpha just working this open sideline, not facing much resistance. Roberto and Von Alton working it up front. Roberto taking a little dip, but he's back up. Looks across the field to James. Just barely gets it. No, almost a miscommunication. Oh, he actually, they actually count as a score. But he was able to come away with it. And just like that, State back up three with 30 seconds left. But that doesn't really matter at this point because they're at sitting at a pretty 12 to 9 lead. So now. If Duke wants to get back in this game, what are they going to need to do? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is just uh, first, you know, uh, keep the disc in their possession, uh, especially on offense. The longer you can hold on to it, uh, the more you're going to wear down the defense. Defense certainly gets more tired than offense throughout the course of a point. Uh, but beyond that, especially if Alpha is coming out again with their zone look, uh, they really just need to put some pressure on and force the, not force, but, uh, you know, really get the disc downfield. Uh, it seems, you know, if they take a little too long in the backfield, uh, they're bound to make a mistake. Uh, and that is not on their before, favor. Yeah. We're seeing some new players on the line for Alpha. You'll see in the three position, uh, senior Austin Maydean. Um, in the six position, uh, transfer sophomore Judah Jodry. Sophomore Lynch will take the pull for Alpha as they look to close out this game. It's a high floater and it's going to just sink back in bounds. Miller on the mark. Mapes with the disc in his hand. Jodry on the mark. Lee staying tight to the disc. Makes takes a, a deep shot, and it's going generally flat, but it uh, looks like he was right on the line. Let's see what the call is. It appears he's out of bounds, so Lynch will leave the disc for Bunting to pick up, and Alpha will set up with the break chance to close out the game. NC State can seal the deal here with this possession. Bunting almost getting locked up in the backfield, but able to find <coughs> Leon inside look. Senior Medine continues it across the field to Jodry. Lee finding Jodry in the backfield, and they're just working it back across to the open side. Oh, 
Bunting finding Miller in the middle of the field. Low pass, but he's able to collect it. It's a 20 yard under to Miller on the sideline. I love that the sideline's kind of following wherever the disc is. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, it's truly part of their job. Um, as you know, they get a better view on the disc and are just able to communicate better. Uh, Miller looking for a long around to Judah, but uh, he's unable to complete it. Mapes picking up the backfield. Ooh, great block there. And able to redeem himself and just knock <laughs> that disc down. Now we see a little bit of the fatigue setting in on both sides as you see players uh, starting to walk a little bit, not move quite as fast as they did at the start. Hands on their hips and whatnot. Exactly. Freshman John Laney with the disc on the sideline. Back to Lee. Lynch. Looking upfield, signaling to Bunting to make a deep cut. And finds Jodry instead. Tight pass to Medine, back to Lynch, right up the trap sideline. Flat sideline, excuse me. Just some really smooth backfield work between uh, Medine and Lynch. Uh, age gap not holding them back at all. Back to Dean. I'm loving these quick short passes. It's really really keeping the defense on their toes. Absolutely, and uh, there's really no better way to wear out defenders than uh, just some classic small ball. Uh, forcing them to stay loyal, stay tight. That's oh, a, like a low backhand, yep, but they're gonna call it. Drew Bunting is able to hold on to it. So NC State able to come away with the win on that possession there. Almost gave up a, a goal, but they were able to, to block it in their half. NC State's going to come away with the win, 13-9. Overall, really, really solid, solid game, though. Absolutely. It certainly had to ebb and flow, you know, much more even in the beginning. Alpha uh, breaking out with the lead, but Duke fighting their way back into it all the way down to one point. Uh, before Alpha closed it out, uh, and that's definitely gonna definitely gonna help NC State's chances in getting into the the end of the season, which is a really solid win over Duke. Yeah, certainly. Uh, right now, uh, college rankings came out just this past week. They're currently sitting uh, at seventh in the country in the algorithm, so they'll look to hold on to that position for the rest of the season, uh, and then hopefully at regionals will. Uh, go out and earn their bid to nationals for the first time in uh, over three or four years. That's fantastic. We're really looking forward to hearing about the rest of the men's ultimate season for NC State. That's going to do it for us here down at Method Road Field. Thank you for tuning in to our Pack TV broadcast. If you're still enjoying the commentary as well as the content, Stick around for the women's game. We'll be starting the stream for that in a few minutes. Uh, like I said, though, my name is Blake Charlton. Alongside me, Alex, our guest commentator. Fantastic analysis. Really appreciated it. We'll be seeing you shortly with our women's game. It's been my pleasure.